I've said this before, you know, we got to get one of these at home. It's a different ball game. It's different, you know, playing in 20-degree uh, weather and snow, cold and wind is a different uh, type of game than playing here. Oh, that turns out not to be true, Aaron. Aaron Rodgers right there. That was two years ago, almost to the day. When Aaron Rodgers got his ass whipped on the road in the NFC Championship by Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers, who went on to lose the Super Bowl to the Kansas City Chiefs, which looks like it could happen again this year. This is interesting to see your daily sports podcast, news, narratives, takes, and gambling. We'll try to make this a quick one, get you on your way to work or home from work or whatever you're doing with work. My mic is about to fall off because, sure, microphones doesn't know how screws work and that occasionally screws need to be tightened. So uh, hopefully my mic doesn't fall the fuck off this morning. But they are a microphone company, not an engineering company. Here we go. Our top story today was going to be why everyone is rooting against Patrick Mahomes. I have decided to pivot. We got some controversies today. We'll talk about that. But we're going to start with the Rams and the Niners. And the most important thing about this game, which is that last time they played, which is just two weeks ago with the division championship on the line, sort of. There were as many Niners fans as there were Rams fans, and it was way louder from the Niners fans when the Rams had the ball. I remember Karen Stafford. I'm going to just keep calling her Karen Stafford until people forget her actual name. Karen Stafford went on a podcast to say it was like basically a road game for them, which is super embarrassing because the Rams don't have a fan base. Oh, L.A. No, they don't love football out there. They love their own teams, including the San Francisco 49ers. So on Ticketmaster this week, there was a restriction to reselling tickets. Quote, Public sales to the game at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California, are restricted to residents of the greater Los Angeles region. Residency will be based on credit card billing address at checkout. Orders by residents outside of the greater Los Angeles region will be canceled without notice and refunds given. Ooh, that was later taken down. That was later taken down. But... It turns out that is a problem because you can restrict to whom you sell, but you cannot restrict at this point in the season who gets to sell their shit. So if I own the ticket, I get to sell it to whoever I want. Now, if the Rams still had possession of the ticket, they could sell it to whomever they wanted. However, season ticket holders didn't have such restrictions. This is from Pro Football Talk. Quote, Rams season ticket holders bought up every ticket to the NFC Championship game. Season ticket holders, but there are no restrictions on reselling those tickets to 49ers fans. <laughs> and all of the 49ers media is having a really great time with this. It's gone without explanation because the season ticket holders who bought up all the tickets are like, uh, I'm going to sell it to whoever the fuck I want, bro. It's America. True. Had to put that in the fine print when you sold the original ticket from, from the Rams to the season ticket holders. This is hilarious. This is absolutely hilarious. This is effing hilarious. The NFL just so pissed that nobody in LA loves the Rams and the Chargers, but they fucking don't. They don't. They don't. They never will. They never, ever will. They never will. Maybe it'll actually, that's not true. It'll take about 15 to 20 years for everybody who's between the ages of like seven and 15 right now when they become adults, perhaps, and they start having kids. But that would only work if those people grew up in households that already didn't have allegiances. You think I would have chosen to be a Lions fan? No. That's how that works. So I find this uh, this is effing hilarious. And I just I just want someone to check in on Kelly Stafford. Speaking of checking in on the privileged wives of the elite, let's talk about why everyone hates Patrick Mahomes. So I'm going to bring this up on Twitter. Uh, this is from Barstool Sports. They got it from someone that has 3 million views after the game. Brittany Mahomes, or Brittany, whatever her name is now, uh, or was before Mahomes, I don't know. Here she is, spraying champagne. She pops the bottle and just sprays it out the window all over people. And they're all mostly probably chill with this. Okay, all right, shush. All right, enough. Um, yeah, that's annoying. She's just super annoying. And then I said yesterday that everybody hates them. And Barstool Sports copied my headline. The whole world is rooting against the Chiefs because of how annoying his brother and wife are. That's true. I mean, we all are. It's crazy. Jackson Mahomes, who... I don't know if we talked about this. He went to a bar, and they couldn't seat his group of, like, 17. And so he, like, shamed them on TikTok and Twitter. And it's like a small business in Kansas City. You're like, dude, eat shit. So, yeah, no, everybody's rooting against Mahomes because of his family. <laughs> Which sucks to suck, but it's just... It's just ironic how quickly he became. He went from upstart to 
the guy we all love to hate. Unbelievable. Let's do some controversy. Who wants some controversy? Let's do some controversy. John Stockton, NBA Hall of Fame basketball player, suspended from attending Gonzaga basketball games. He has season tickets there. I, th- I think he lives in Salt Lake still, and it's probably easy to go to Spokane. Uh, he doesn't believe in the mask mandate. He doesn't want to do the mask mandate. And then he said publicly that 150 professional athletes have died from from the vaccine or something. So Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who is probably the greatest player of all time, but nobody talks about him, uh, had this to say about John Stockton. Okay, I was asking you about yes. John Stockton. And, and what do you do yes. with him? What do you do with something like that? The claim that it's just from outer space that 150 athletes have dropped dead, professional athletes, on the court. Um, I, I think statements like that make the public look upon athletes as uh, basically dumb jocks. I love that. Good for you, Kareem. Good for you, Kareem, standing up to, to John Stockton. So, And he's like, hey, they probably want me at these games. Like, no, Gonzaga's fine without you, man. You're definitely the best alumni, but... They're really, really, really good at basketball. They're too scared to join the Mountain West in a basketball-only conference. And they probably should, but John Stockton has been suspended. Let's keep it controversial for a minute. The New Jersey Devils uh, rose to the Carolina Hurricanes 7-4. P.K. Subban, the superstar uh, defenseman for the Devils. P.K. has played for, off the top of my head, Montreal, Nashville, and I think New Jersey, and that's it. And he's a superstar. He, his, his career was trending toward Hall of Fame, and now... We'll see. He's got a, some problems of his own. We'll maybe dive into if it, it rears his ugly head again. He's got some. He's got a little slew foot problem, which is super dirty, and people are like, it's a mental tick. Anyway, um, his brother was the one that was uh, discriminated against, and we talked about him yesterday. Jordan Subban in Florida, PK is really, I guess, and this is what he said. He he. He said he couldn't sleep. He was really annoyed. Monkey gestures happened in the NFL or NFL, excuse me, NHL all the time. There was famously a banana thrown on the ice at Wayne Simmons at a Detroit game way back in the day, about 15 years ago. So apparently he's really mad and and he's trying to, he's putting pressure on the organizations in the league. He said that he's doing that publicly. He didn't say what he told them, but he apparently he's really pissed off and he's a superstar. Um, and this is good. Right now, I believe that Drake and Justin Bieber are producing um, a series called Black Ice about black people in hockey. That'll be That'll be good. I think that'll be good for all of us. NBA tread deadline will be soon-ish, and everybody wants to talk about Ben Simmons and Harden and Lillard. My gut feeling is that nothing is going to happen. But if it does, we'll talk about it right here. Speaking of Philadelphia, uh, the Flyers (laughs) lost their 12th straight hockey game. 12th. They have a couple Hall of Famers on their team, at least one. Uh, Claude Giroux is probably going to the Hall of Fame. In the game... Keith Yandel, defenseman who's been in the NHL forever, tied the NHL record for consecutive games played. That is bananas in the NHL. The record for consecutive games played in the National Hockey League is 964, and Keith Yandel has tied it, and he, he exited the game completely healthy. And he got a standing ovation for that. From Flyers fans. And the majority of his damage has been done with the New York Rangers. And then, of course, he was on uh, the the uh, Florida Panthers teams that were really good. So I just want to do some math here. I should have done this before the show, but I didn't because I didn't want to. Uh, okay, hold on. 964 divided by 82 equals 11.7 seasons without missing a game. I seriously considered calling in sick to work today. <laughs> Man, that's unbelievable. Good for him, but the Flyers lost 12 in a row. So weird scene in South Philadelphia. The team gets booed, but Yandel gets cheered. And they're like, it's not your fault, buddy. You're literally doing everything your body can physically handle to make this happen for us. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, You know what? We'll save it for tomorrow. We'll talk about the MLB Players Association and the league trying to figure this out. People are not talking about it. There's a, there's a strike right now. There's a, whole, there's a lockout. So... Uh, yeah, there might not be baseball. Catchers, Pitchers and catchers are not going to report in a month as of right now. It, it seems like they understand that people are really sick of this shit and we don't really care about baseball enough to like put pressure on anyone anymore. So they should probably take care of this, would be my suggestion, um, especially with spring football. The USFL is happening again this year. I really don't care, but uh, if baseball's not happening, I'll care a lot more. That's for sure. I'd like to give a shout-out to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who 22 hours ago tweeted, Happy birthday to Tristan Wirfs. 
Tristan Wirfs, who's the best right tackle in football, of course, he turned like 24, 25. He was injured in the first round of the playoffs and couldn't play against the Rams, and they probably really need him. So he tweeted this picture or this gif of himself sitting sad at a bar with confetti falling all around him. Man, that's funny. Oh, what a t- what a rough time. And you know those social media people, they just uh, they schedule those things ahead of time. And then you don't really think about what could happen. You schedule it so long ago. You're like, well, well, who knows what could happen. Oh, man. Well, yeah, happy birthday to Tristan Wirfs. I guess it was yesterday. I suppose we missed it, and that happens. I hope you enjoyed yesterday debating whether or not overtime rules should stand or what we should do about all of this. I'm very much over that debate. However, Josh Allen still, it's really interesting that the the Bills lost because Josh Allen had one of the greatest postseasons in NFL history, and it was just through 10 games, or excuse me, two games. It was just through two games. And he didn't win. So I'm sure that this will be addressed. Um, The data on the coin toss came out yesterday. People started to look into it. 90% of the time, the team that wins the coin toss wins the game in overtime. And of that, um, over 70-something percent of the time happens on the first drive, which means it's not competitive. The coin is literally deciding the outcome uh, of these games, which we kind of all inherently knew. But when you have the data, it's really damning, and it shows that it's not a competitive situation. It's just completely stupid. And actually, and I did a podcast about this on my sister podcast, Game theory. It appears as if rock, paper, scissors would actually be more competitive. Just kidding. That's not true. Listen to the episode on game theory. Josh Allen had nine touchdowns, zero turnovers, 771 total yards. He had 14 incompletions. He had nine touchdowns and 14 incompletions. So we, uh, we, we all got robbed. Many people are kind of bummed. Like that was very clearly... That was very clearly the Super Bowl that happened on Sunday night. But now we'll get to talk about Aaron Rodgers. We'll get to talk about uh, the coaching carousel and who's going to retire. It's starting to appear more and more like uh, Tom Brady will not be back. He's never made us wait this long to tell us what he's going to do. It appears very much like he will um, be retiring. Uh, that's the gut feeling that everybody has. Aaron Rodgers is up in the air as well. We talked about it yesterday. He said he's not going to be... Not going to be there for a rebuild. That means Rodgers and Brady could both potentially be out of the league. They will certainly not be playing with their teams. It's very clear Rodgers doesn't want to come back with the Packers. Uh, Big Ben is basically going to retire, which is so funny for Big Ben because if Brady retires the same year that Big Ben retires, no one's going to care about Big Ben's retirement at all or his enshrinement speech when he gets into the Hall of Fame. Everyone's it's going to be just completely cucked by Tom Brady. That's so funny. It's so, so funny. Ben McAdoo, the former fired head coach of the New York football giants, was hired as the offensive coordinator of the Carolina Panthers. The rumor was that the Panthers had to hire a quote-unquote superstar offensive coordinator for head coach Matt Rule to keep his job. I don't know that this counts, but we're going to find out. A bunch bunch of people were turning him down. We'll be tracking the NBA trade deadline, the NHL trade deadline, the Olympics, and, of course, the NFL coaching carousel, as I'm sure more news is going to come out here and there. Like, rate, review, subscribe. This is all available on YouTube. Maybe if enough, if you like me, I'll put it on Instagram as well. Back and better than ever tomorrow morning.